We're going straight at the box here, and let's say the object is to go this way. And I'll see this a lot. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you just cringe as soon I, as you saw me That's that. a hard cringe for me. <laughs>Hey everyone, welcome back. Coach Tom here with Coach Renee. And uh, we were actually having a conversation the other week about, uh, about breaking down moves. And uh, you said to me, uh, you wanted to show some love for the step vault. So this is the opportunity now. We're gonna show some love for the step vault. We are. <laughs> I think the step vault doesn't get enough love. Um, I, I think it's one of those moves where we were talking about when we show it to people as an intro move, some people, you know, they, they light up about it because it like, looks like something they can do. And some people are just like bored to tears with the idea of like they want to do, you know, the dive kongs and the dash vaults and the step vault doesn't really look as sexy as those things. It's not, it's not the sexy move, but it's, it's probably the most common and most used vault in parkour in completely, right? So like there's no, uh, I mean, you know, Kongs are, you know, super popular and people really like doing Kongs and they're, they have a lot of propensity for, you know, covering distance and doing really cool challenges. But the step vault, you're going to use that way more often than a Kong vault. Um, so, yeah. So actually, before we actually even get into it, I just want to talk about it. It's called a step vault, right? <laughs> not, a, not a safety vault. Yeah. So th this vault is probably a bit safer than a Kong vault, but... <laughs> We're not calling it a safety vault. A safety vault is, it, it's such a silly name for a move in parkour because most of the things that we do in parkour are not necessarily intended for safety. We're actively pursuing risk and sometimes yeah. our step vault challenges will be risky challenges. So. I, I think the name safety came from the idea of like, oh, going up to a ledge, better. Oh, safety, you know, don't wanna, <laughs> don't wanna fall off that drop there. I think, I, I think that's where it came from, but. Who knows? Yeah. If, if you know where Safety Vault came from, the, perhaps the origins of, of Safety Vault, do let us know. I am curious about, about why that came to be. Yeah. It's also commonly referred to as a speed step, mm -hmm. but I also think the speed step is more for like, I mean, uh, for moving fast, right? And mm -hmm. Step Vault um, are not always used for speed, right? Sometimes it is like used for more controlled scenarios and maybe that's the safety vault kind of thought process but anyway we don't call it a safety vault it's called a step vault um, if you're moving quickly you can call it a speed step but anyway that I, I needed to put that a little we need <laughs> I needed to put that to rest because it's uh, it's something that bothers me whenever people you know they do like a really sketchy challenge and it's using a step vault and they're like oh I really like this safety to pre and it's like what? no that's not safe at all <laughs> i guess it kind, of, it, kind of, it kind of does roll off a little bit when we're getting more into slang and jargon because you mm -hmm. can say safety mm -hmm. whereas if i just say step mm -hmm. it's one word versus two words I, i'm still not really a fan but I, yeah. I can see how that that becomes just easier to roll off the tongue step vault is so we used to have the safety roll Mm -hmm. And then that just turned into roll or shoulder roll, right? So uh, I think it's time we put to rest the idea that parkour is about safety. And right. I, see, I see where you're going. It's it, about, yeah. you know, <laughs> actively seeking challenge and mm -hmm. controlling risk. And it's not about safety. It's about, you know, putting yourself in situations that you have to be able to control well. So, All right. Well, back, back to the step <laughs> vault. Uh, so, so one of the things we wanted to kind of point out first is, just, just what people end up doing when we show them a step vault. So a lot of times, you know, I'll be teaching a class and I'll be like, step vault, I'll break it down slow. You know, we'll get to this position. I'll explain what's happening and I'll step through like this nice and slow, land on one leg like so. You know, and then maybe I'll show them a fast one. We'll go through again. But like what most people do, particularly if they're like an athletic individual or a kid is something more like this. And there's no step. It's like, it's like they, they skip the step part. There's like a foot. It's like a tap, yeah. tap vault. You know? Tap vault. Uh, and, I, and I don't know why. I think it's, I think it's because, uh, well, I hypothesize why <laughs> is uh, because they're, they're after that like faster move. And they think like, oh, if I actually put weight on that foot, 
you know, it's, it's going to have like a slower effect, not be as dynamic. And we'll, we'll get into a little, a little bit why that's important to actually have that firm foot placement. But I'm curious also, like what, what other sort of like mistakes or things do you see right off the bat after you show someone what it's supposed to look like? Yeah, I mean, I mean what you just mentioned is, is clearly the most common one. But I also find with kids especially, I think, I think they just really like the feeling of doing something crazy and cool. And they'll do like an exaggerated version of it uh. where they'll just kind of like, yeah, I did something cool, right? Um, so that's, that's often common and, and you notice there, I actually turned all the way around and, mm -hmm. and that's leading into, uh, another common mistake is they're using it to turn around, which it certainly can be used to turn around. Um, but they're not understanding that it's also, uh, you need to be able to move forward very well out of this mm -hmm. move as well. Yeah, it is definitely a more of a forward, but also a, sometimes a turning move. And I, I think the other thing with that too is, is like they don't understand that we're trying to get into a stride position, right? Mm, yeah. uh, so we get this quick foot tab, they kind of land on two feet, kind of clunky, you don't get a lot of flow with it. And it is one of those things where I think we just talked about it where we were saying it's not, it's not as sexy as like the other, the other moves, but it can be. You know? <laughs> if you do a nice step vault, like it, it can feel <laughs> really smooth to do a nice step vault. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the other thing I wanted to address was um, how people, we were talking about this uh, oftentimes in speed courses and things, once they learn a collection of moves, they will go away from the step vault. It doesn't mm. become their favorite move anymore. Mm -hmm. And maybe because you know, they haven't really learned to do it as smooth or they just don't realize, they think, oh, I gotta do something harder. And so oftentimes like, I'll see something such as in a speed course where we're going this direction uh, or sorry, we're going straight at the box here and let's say the object is to go this way. And I'll see this a lot. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, you just cringe as soon as I, you that start That's, a, that's that. a hard cringe for me. <laughs> um, so what's going on there? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so they're, they're using, uh, so we refer to this vault as a slide vault. Uh, you know, you could also call it a lazy vault, a thief vault. Um, but uh, the, the rule that you're breaking is the rotation rule. So um, in parkour, you know, a lot of vaults will ha have a natural rotation to them. So uh, the obvious exceptions to that are Kongs and dashes. There's no natural rotation to it. But the, a step vault's natural rotation is to t rotate towards that hand. So if, um, if, you, if you have your left hand here, your natural rotation after that exit will be to turn to the left. Whereas with a slide vault or a lazy vault, the natural rotation in, is initially um, towards the hand, the first hand, but then it's supposed to change to the other hand. Otherwise, you don't really put any weight on the, the back hand. So the rotation should turn you back towards the second hand. Uh, and so when you see somebody who wants to go that way, and they do their, their lazy vault with their left hand leading, they're breaking the rule of rotation, and they're going in the wrong direction of, that in, of the intended use of that vault. All the time, too. Yeah. Like, I see this all the time, and every time. It's, oh, and, I, and I know it comes from a place, usually, of wanting to do, like, again, people just kind of, they don't, give enough love to the step vault. They, yeah. they kind of think that they got to do a different move. It's like, it, oh, it's the first move you learn. So after you learn it, yeah. go on. And it's like, it's like, no, like if you're doing, I don't know, if you're learning how to like box, you're going to learn how to throw a straight. Do you stop throwing the straight? No, it's still a good punch. So <laughs> the step vault is still a good vault. And you touched on a bit with uh, the, the turning too. And uh, you know, sometimes we like to think about it in, in classes too. We'll describe it as, you know, if I wanna, if this is the structure I'm going over and say it's a course or something, or say it's even just like a, a flow line and I wanna go this way or this way, that's the hand you put down, right? It's, if I'm turning right, right hand. If I'm turning left, left hand. Not if I'm approaching straight on at the box and I wanna turn right, I don't do. Again, slide vault, lazy vault, because it's going to put you in the other direction. It's going to look really jank. Yeah, 
totally do that. Now, and, and, and we're talking about this in terms of like, what is, what is efficient, right? Um, and and I, I mentioned the rule, the breaking the rule of rotation, and that happens all the time in, if you're creating a line. And so um, sometimes you break the rule because it will set you up better for the other thing that you're trying after that. So uh, I, don't, I wanna be clear here that it's not necessarily, um, you know, breaking the rule isn't always the worst thing to do. Uh, sometimes you have to break the rule to, uh, to, to do what you're trying to do. But in the, in the case of, you know, if you're trying to move efficiently, if you're trying to do, especially if you're doing like a speed course, you should follow the rule because usually the rule, the rule is in place. It was developed for this specific reason. You're talking about the scenario where, let's say like this, everything else I did before this, you know, I had a plan for my run, everything else I did before this, it had to be, this side, mm -hmm. but I want to go this way. Yeah. And you can. You can. <laughs> you, you can go that can. way. It's going to feel a little forced. It's definitely not going to feel as smooth as yeah, <laughs> if but I it, were able to use the other hand. But again, that would be a good use of, okay, use the vault that changes directions. Mm -hmm. So use the slide vault. Use, yeah. use the lazy, right? So that you can actually shift your weight this way. I still feel like that vault, lazy vault, slide vault, doesn't really fit as well into speed. Like rarely, you know, rarely is it, um, I, I like it as like a, if you're approaching already laterally to a wall, but I think this, this is a whole other, mm -hmm. other topic, other video is uh, talking about maybe the applications of, yeah. of that vault. Well, so, uh, so I mean, and you just mentioned approaching diagonally. I still think the step vault's the most efficient <laughs> because then you just reach to the far end mm. and it becomes yeah. a weight and then you can push off the foot. It's really effective. Mm -hmm. At getting you to move in uh, like with minimal co contact on the box to move mm -hmm. in the direction that you're intending to go. Okay, so what are what are the other applications for step vault? Because we kind of just focused on like, okay, you learn step vault. It's you know we're dealing with just a, a wall such as this one or a railing, but that's those aren't the only places where we can use yeah. this move. Well, so we talked about turning, right? So like if you want to go over something and turn really quickly, uh, a step vault is probably going to be better than any other vault at doing that. Um, the, uh, you know, there's also other application, like, so another application would be um, uh, turning into a, a cat hang, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to do like a turn vault, but you, maybe you're nervous about doing the turn vault, you could put your, your foot on top and then you're in a cat hang and you're getting yourself down into a controlled position really well. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you're not nervous uh, in a situation where you know, you, you all are going to have to use your imagination for a second mm -hmm. here. We're not about to take the camera to another part of the gym, but uh, let's say this was uh, a flat, you know, roof, right. right, that you're on and you're running this way. You can do that step turn quite, that, that's probably the most effective way to get down quickly in that scenario. Yeah, it, and even if it wasn't a platform, mm -hmm. if you're doing it fast, right, it's... Yeah, it's going to be a great way. Yeah, like you to, could do, uh, get over you could quick. do like a diving turn vault. Like you could, you know, reach over like that, but you're going to have a little bit less control. Does it make it a safety vault if you take the step? No, <laughs> <laughs> it's still, you know, you could still. Uh, I don't know if you would slip. I'm not trying to imply that, you know, you're going to mess it up, but it still becomes a very dynamic move. By by no means does it look like, oh, you took the safe way because you didn't like throw yourself over the structure. Uh, so actually the main application that I wanted to talk about was it's a way to um, descend. Mm. So a step vault is a descending move. Um, and so, I mean, you, it, and this is the way that we introduce it, or uh, I, I like to introduce this as uh, uh, it's a low impact move and it's mm. intended to be low impact. So, uh, so the, the technique that you're aiming for is to keep your foot on the box while the other one reaches for the floor. And you wanna to try to minimize the impact on this foot. So you're reaching down so that you get your hips all the way extended before that foot comes off the box. Um, so if you are coming down from height, this is gonna be a much better vault to use than, well, just jumping. It's also gonna be better than a Kong because a Kong is a high hip maneuver. Um, Slower actually. 
It's a Kong it's is slower. Kong yeah. is slower. You, Kong you have is more slower. air time, so you're not back on the ground. And then as you'll fast. probably have to uh, to deal with the impact for longer with a Kong, right? You'll either have to roll, or uh, you know, put your hands down, and you know, not that you wouldn't do that with a mm -hmm. step vault, but it's more likely that you'll experience more impact, and there's more uh, consequence of dealing with that impact. Um, but I mean, you know, the the exception coming down from height would be, you know, maybe a maybe a lazy vault or uh, some you know some sort of vault with two hands on the exit would also be really useful in that scenario. But the step vault is really great at it too. So, um, uh, so that's the main thing. So it's yeah, actually, it would actually be faster than those alternatives. Yeah. So because it won't require that additional time mm -hmm. to get the second hand down. Also, you, you know, you, this I think falls in the lines of descending as well. Is we, we talk about it as like, okay, I'm doing a gap jump, and let's say I, I achieved a precision landing, but I want to keep moving, I want to complete a line, or or just my goal is to get past the wall. It becomes like a landing, yep. right? It becomes this this thing, and when when you get good at it. <laughs> Uh, you can almost make that, I don't know if you've ever had that, where you, you make the decision in the air. You're like, I'm going to turn this into a, mm. into a step ball. Well, it's always such a cool feeling <laughs> where you're like doing a running, running jump and you know, you're going in for that precision landing. You're like, oh, I can just you know, turn that into a, a step ball. Either with, even with two feet, even with two feet, you, know, you can sneak it out like pretty, pretty quickly and it looks relatively the same. You can fool a lot of people with a two-footed slip on your step vault versus a one-footed one. Yeah, I mean, this is a great point because you're, we're talking about, you know, you know, in parkour, we're always looking at, uh, I mean, we, we talk about all the problems that we're solving as challenges, right? I refer to you like, oh, what's the challenge here, right? Or, oh, try to jump from there to here. Um, so, you know, the challenge, you know, might start as a cat leap, and then that might turn into a crane. Okay, I think I can crane it. Oh, and if I can crane it, I can probably precision. And then if you get the precision, it's like, okay, well, this is the spot that I'm working with. I'm trying to increase challenge. I feel like the precision is starting to feel easier. What's the next step? Mm -hmm. um, you know, it might be to do a step vault. Yeah. Um, and li little do people know, so I don't feel like you, t you, might, you might disagree with me on this, but sure. I don't feel like you require the same height of jump to pull out a step vault as you do for a precision. That's absolutely true. I agree uh, 100% because, and, and it depends on the challenge. So mm -hmm. if it's like more of a level jump, you'll probably have to be able to precision it before you can step vault it. Yeah. But if it's like, if you're jumping up to a higher yeah. surface, yeah. you could really sneak out a step vault yeah, without particularly really having for like, you know, old, old tight hips over here. I, I have to get my hips up to a certain height to do a precision jump. But if I, if I can, you know, lengthen and lower my body to sneak out that that step ball that I actually I don't I don't need to get quite as high yeah yeah so this kind of brings up uh so one of the reasons I think step vaults are so useful is that it allows you to stay so low to the surface that you're going over and that is that has benefits for reducing impact but it's also excellent for speed. And mm -hmm. you know, we were, we've obviously been touching on speed this whole time, but, uh, but the speed you can execute a step vault is probably faster than any other vault, um, maybe with the exception of the speed vault, which is basically a step vault without your foot. Um, but I don't know, do you think you can stay, is it possible to stay lower with a step vault than with a speed vault? Oh, that's a good question. I actually don't, I don't know if that's true. I, I think it's probably equivalent because um, mm -hmm. you can say pretty low. I, on I a think step you vault, sacrifice speed, vault. speed. <laughs> sacrifice the speed vault, but uh, mm. but you, you sacrifice the uh, uh, the speed of the movement uh, by trying to go lower on. If you really try to exaggerate lower on the step vault, like if I wanted to get really low here, I would have to like you know really try to get get down versus speed vault you can get you can get low but without again without sacrificing like you can without slowing yourself down with the yeah, yeah 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 i agree so i mean i i would say in in most so if you are in a speed course in most scenarios if you approach a vaultable structure you're probably going to use a step fault mm -hmm. especially if there's a change in direction yeah. there's gonna be cases where you're just going straight where a speed vault will probably be just like a 
fraction faster, mm. but the step vault is is often more easy, more uh, like easier to uh, to actually execute in the moment um, without mistakes, and uh, and it's more adaptable because then you could make that slight direction change, whereas mm -hmm. the speed vault is very linear despite being on that one hand. One more point on uh, just comparing speed vault to step vault to, um, I don't, I'm not sure if you agree with this, but if, if I'm doing a speed vault, I, I always, when I'm, when I'm teaching it, I say like, it's not, you can't do it slow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, okay, you, you can, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's not gonna have the same dynamic effect. I would have a hard time, like if you just start here, Sure, if we're taking photos. <laughs> it works, it looks like you're going fast. It's a speed vault. However, if I'm, act if, if, the step vault, you can apply it when you don't have as much run up, right? That's what I'm getting at here. If, uh, you know, if your back's against the wall or if you just finished another move, that step vault will work perfectly. Speed vault, you kind of have to have some momentum into it before it becomes effective. And in my head right now, I'm, I'm visualizing like, uh, Toby Seeger hitting up that famous like double Kong where oh, he, he yeah. speed vaults into it, right? Yeah. And it's like, yeah, like he, not only did he have a run after the speed vault, he had run before it, right? Yeah. Like I don't want to speed vault if there's something like that block right there, if I wanted to hit that, I'd probably do a step vault, right? Yeah. Or if, or if I didn't have enough run up behind the vault itself, I would again, probably do a step vault, not a speed vault. Yeah, I mean, this, this, I mean, you, you just sparked this in my head. If I wanted to vault this structure and then take off of that structure over there, and it's really quite tight, the step vault actually can moderate the amount of distance I get mm -hmm. because I can actually slow it down easier than a speed vault or a dash. I mean, a dash vault actually I can do pretty well as well, but but I can actually pull this landing back so that I can have a better approach mm -hmm. going into that. that it's jump because there. of that extra exactly. appendage contact there. So, so yeah, I mean, it, this is, you know, the way that, the way that, you know, after this, the way this conversation went, it's, it's making me love it even more. <laughs> I have fallen in love now yeah. with the step vault. I already loved it so much before, but I mean, there's, I mean, and there's countless uses too. You can do two handed step vaults, you know, just getting over something. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you'll see like muggles, you know, mm -hmm. They're like, oh, I don't want to walk all the way around. They're, oh, I'm just going to climb over this little like railing or fence or something yeah. like that. They'll do a step vault to do it. It's intuitive. And it's, it's a very intuitive move. You know, occasionally they'll do the true safety vault, right? <laughs> One of these. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, often it's, just, it's a step vault. It's like a really intuitive um, natural movement. And they won't necessarily reach for the floor and have that nice like exit that we're always looking for. Um, you know, maybe they'll jump off the top, but they will do a step vault. So it's such a useful skill and it's not just this basic move. It has so many uses and, and opportunities for, for increasing challenge as well. Um, and it's also good for going fast. I mean, I think we, we really covered the speed element of this. And it, and it can look and feel really nice. Yeah, very, <laughs> very much agree with that. Anyways, clearly we can geek out on this for forever, <laughs> but uh, we eventually do have to end this video. Yeah. So I'm actually curious uh, for uh, people watching, do you love the step vault? Do you, do you find that you use it very much or is it something that you have completely removed from your toolkit because you thought it was a beginner move? Yeah, and if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share it if you found it useful and uh, Hit the notification bell. We're going to be coming at you with some more videos just like this one. And hit us up, originsparkour.com for coaching. Any of the links as well in the description if you want to support us. And we'll see you next time.